First principle says, as Talopa put it, have a mind that is open to everything and attached to nothing. One of the central principles of my life is that no one knows enough to be a pessimist about anything. And that each and every one of us, when we close our mind to what is possible for us or what is possible for humanity, closes off the genius that resides and lives in each and every one of us. But a mind that is open to everything and attached to nothing is a mind that says, I'm never looking for anything to be offended by. And that whatever anybody else out there has to say, my response to that is, that's an interesting point of view. I've never considered that before. Things that, uh, that Emerson said is in, in one of his very first essays, he says, the first thing we have to say respecting what are called new views here in New England, where we are right now, is that they are not new. But the very oldest of thoughts cast into the mold of these new times. Progress is, imp is impossible if you always do things the way you've always done things. But the other word in this, what Talopa said is, be attached nowhere. Be attached nowhere. Attachment really means I am deluding myself into a belief that if I can't have or if I can't do this or that thing, then somehow I am going to become immobilized. So an open mind that is detached. In one of, uh, in my most recent book, in a spiritual solution to every problem, I have a, um, an observation. And it's uh, an observation from Anthony DeMello, a man I respect enormously, a priest, who, um, in the way to love, puts it this way. Here's a great test for your relationships, especially the relationships that you're in uh, with uh, those whom you love, not your children, but your spouses and your lovers and, and so on. Try this test on for size. One, I am not really attached to you at all. I am merely deluding myself into the belief that without you, I will not be happy. And two, and here's the toughest test for non-attachment. I leave you free to be yourself, to think your thoughts, indulge your tastes, follow your inclination, behave in ways that you decide are to your liking. Most of us do in our relationships and why they are not as successful as we would like them to be is that we become attached and we tell ourselves that this person behaves in a way that I find offensive, then I can't be happy. I make my happiness, my fulfillment dependent upon those people that I love being what I think that they should be. And, and detachment doesn't mean being a victim, it just simply means I know that I can make my life fulfilled and happy by having a mind that is open to everything and attached nowhere. The second principle is a very simple principle. It says you can't give away what you don't have. Now it sounds ridiculous, okay, but it's more than what meets the ear as you hear this. You can't give away what you don't have. People who are not good at giving away love can't give away love because they don't have it to give away. If I want to give you a dozen oranges, I can't give you those dozen oranges unless I go out and pick up 12 oranges someplace. Otherwise, all it is is just empty rhetoric. And the same thing is true of virtually everything in your life. You can't give away love for others if you don't have love in here to give away. If what you have in here is contempt, if what you have in here is anger, if what you have in here is fear, then these are the things you're going to be giving away in your life. There's a law, sort of a law in the universe. I call it the law of attraction. And the law of attraction is one that works like this. You get back from the universe, from the world, what it is that you put out there in the world. And if you're putting out there into the world 
that I am not worthy of attracting something beautiful into my life, that the universe will respond back to you with exactly that message. The ocean of abundance is there, and you can go to that ocean of abundance, and you can take a Mack truck, and you can fill it up 20 times a day, and take it out of there, and guess what? It doesn't impact at all the ocean of abundance. It doesn't even go down a zillionth of an inch. It's unlimited. Or you can go to the same ocean of abundance with a eyedropper. And you can just take this much out once a month and say, that's all that seems to be available for me. And the interesting thing for me is that when people go to this ocean of abundance, this uh, unlimited world, all that I have is thine, it says in the holy books. All that I have is thine. It's all there for you. But if you believe inside that it's limited, that you can only get so much, that other people are going to get it before you do, then you'll find yourself creating that very same thing. And the even more interesting part about this, you can't give away what you don't have principle, is that if your message to the universe is gimme, 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 which is a lot of people's message to the universe. I want this from you, I want that from you, please give me this, I have to have that. That's what their prayer is like, that's what their message is, you know, and they say, I want this from the universe, give me, give me, give me. The universe's response back to that kind of a uh, mentality is exactly the same. The universe will say right back to you over and over again, give me, give me, give me. And you'll find yourself never ever arriving but always being in a state of striving, always feeling as if you're being neglected, never feeling as if you have enough, always feeling as if you're being shortchanged because you're constantly under the pressure to give, to get back what the universe is demanding from you. And the interesting thing about all of this, the, the irony of this, is that if you shift that and you say to the universe, to the world, how may I serve? How may I serve? The universe's response back to you is, how may I serve you? How may I serve you? So I shifted that energy off of what can I have into what can I give? It seemed to me that the universe responded back with the very same message. What can I give to you? And the most incredible and wonderful and beautiful abundance has flowed into my life in every way that I can possibly think of. You can't give away what you don't have. So take a look at an inventory of what you do have. How much do you love yourself? How much kindness do you have in you? How much peace do you have in you? How much joy do you have in you? And if you're able to give that away as many times as you can in a given day, watch and see how much more of that continues to show up and come back in your life. The third principle is one of my very favorites. It's called, there are no justified resentments. No matter what kind of uh, uh, anger comes directed towards you, no matter how much hate you may encounter showing up in your life, there are no justified resentments. Meaning that if you carry around resentment, inside of you about anything or about anyone and I'm talking about the person that you lent money to and hasn't paid you back I'm talking about the person in your life that you feel was abusive in your life I'm talking about the person who walked out on you and left you for somebody else I'm talking about all of the things that you have justified in your heart and in your life that you have the right to be resentful about and I'm suggesting to you that those resentments will always end up harming you. you. No one ever dies from a snake bite. The snake bite will never kill you. You cannot be unbitten. Once you're bitten, you're bitten. But it's the venom that continues to pour through your system after the bite that will end up destroying you. If you become steadfast in your abstentions of thoughts of harm directed towards others, all living creatures 
will cease to feel enmity in your presence.